Hey guys, Spirit of Lost Angler, and today what we're going to talk about is how water mixes. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up is when we have reports that maybe we've got a lot of fish being caught in the delta, a lot of redfish, a lot of specks, some of the things that we've talked about, about looking at salinity and dissolved oxygen, may not always make sense. So you're like, oh, well, Peter, they're, they're catching a ton of fish in the delta, a lot of redfish, a lot of specks, but you said if I look at the salinity, then they shouldn't be there. Totally understand. Totally, totally picking up what you're laying down. But let's look at why these fish are in the delta, what they're looking for in the delta, and how you can catch them there. And yeah, that salinity once again plays a big role. So what we're going to look at, we've got a few slides we're going to explain so you can see how the mixing of fresh water and salt water in our delta system helps us determine location of fish in our area. So hang tight and let's take a look at it. So what I want to look at real quick, this is what we would call a salt edge, excuse me, salt wedge estuary. Our uh, delta is this way, Mobile Bay is this way. So what happens is the tidal seawater from the Gulf comes into the bay and it pushes the fresh water coming out of the delta system up because the salt water is denser and therefore heavier than the fresh water. Uh, to kind of get a better idea of it, I'm going to show you another slide that shows it really well too. Um, this shows a wedge style right here, but I'm going to show you a little bit more, I guess, simplified term real quick. So if we look at this diagram right here, what we see is the fresh water is riding on top and the salt water is down on the bottom. Now when this really plays into um, play for us here in the delta, we're going to take a look at the delta real fast. I'm going to go ahead and cast that up. So here is, right here. Here is the Blakely River as she comes down. Here's I-10, here's 98. And we can see that Mobile Bay, as we come up in, right in through here, as we come in, she starts to kind of taper out. If you've ever run that pass, you realize this is like three and four feet deep and all this in here is gonna be uh, eight, 10, 12, 15, 25, 30 feet deep. So what happens is as we have a tide change, Salt water is going to come into the river. Now, it may not get onto the top section. It's probably not high enough salinity content. There's probably more fresh water coming out. And we've got salt water coming in because that salt is creeping along the bottom of the river channel. And during tide changes, that salty water will stay in the river channel. So you'll see it in places like right down the channel of the Blakelet. And you'll see it in other places. So we're going to zoom in real fast on a couple other cool spots. So right up in here, you've got the old battery, okay? This is a nice deep water area right here, the Appalachian. Salt water is going to build up right here. That's why you always have people saying, oh, we're catching a lot of fish up there in the battery. Well, right down in there, there's some jetties that come out just like this. And as that salt, well, as the tide recedes, it leads, leaves that salt water in those deep areas right there. So even during tide changes, you still find fish there. Now, can you catch redfish and speckled trout outside of that deep water trough? Yeah, sure you can. They're going to venture in and out and chase bait fish, but they're going to primarily find their place that they like to live at down in that saltier area. So let's come on up a little bit further. <clears throat> now, and this is going to play true on both sides of the delta. Actually, a little bit more on the Mrs. Excuse me, on the Mobile. If you go up the Mobile River and you fish the docks up yonder. Um, that stays really deep because they've dredged it out for shipping. So you're going to have a nice salt run all the way up through here. You can catch a lot of jacks in here. And you'll also catch jacks and whatnot pushing in. Now, a lot of these fish we have in our area are very freshwater tolerant. So it makes things easier for them to kind of range here and there and everywhere. But they're generally not going to go so far up that they don't have any saltwater refuge. So once again, down on the bottom of the river, you're going to find that salt water, Whereas you may not find it in the upper parts. So let's take a look real quick. I'm going to show you real fast what we're looking at. I'm going to come to the Mayor State Park. We're going to go back to that environmental monitoring website we talked about. I'm going to cast it up real fast. Beautiful. And if we look, we see that there are 4.4 parts per square unit right there. Or whatever PSU stands for. I apologize. Um, so a little bit of salt. Not a whole lot, though. But if we were to take our monitoring system, we were to take it down to the bottom of the river down there, out past uh, Mayor State Park, right there in the uh, Blakely River, we would probably find that salinity closer to 12 or 15, okay? 
So that's what we call a wedge stop. In other words, the salinity, the uh, salt water is pushing its way in like a wedge up into this fresh water of the river flow. So as the salt water stays deep on the channel, the fresh water flows right over the top of it. Now, this isn't true for everywhere. This only happens where we've got a nice volume of water coming out and where we also have some deep water refuge. Now, let's look at a place where there isn't quite so much of that business going on. I'm going to pull this down real fast and we're going to take a look at Weeks Bay. The Weeks Bay is a bit of a dish pan sort of deal. And if you've ever fished in Weeks Bay, then you know, just like I'm talking about, it can be rough. It can be really shallow a lot of the time. You don't have a whole lot of the deep water haunts like you'll have further up into the delta. And that's not always a bad thing. We're going to take a look at the salinity real quick. If I look at my salinity here in Weeks Bay, we haven't had a whole lot of fresh water lately. So I'm willing to bet we've got a pretty good bit of salt. Here we are. Let's see. Here's our salinity at right about 12. Yep, 12. Now, water, salt water, and fresh water interact differently in this area. I don't have the huge volume of fresh water to give me a wedge style profile with the fresh water and salt water. Instead, this water is going to mix horizontally, if you will. It's going to mix together in stages. So we're going to take a look at it real quick. I've got a nice graph for that. <laughs> Bingo. Here we are. So here's the fresh water coming out of Fish River. So that's doing really well. And here's my salt water from the bay. And as we work our way further into Weeks Bay with the tide change, irregardless of where we're at, the salinity is going to change the further I get closer to the river. It doesn't really matter so much about the height of the water. It's going to change minutely, but not a whole lot because it's more, we say isn't very deep for the most part. So my salinity is going to change as I go further up into the river. And it's going to be pretty uniform throughout the water column. Whereas if we go back to the uh, Blakely River, it's once again uh, the saltwater wedge, what we talked about. So in different parts of the water column, it's going to give me different levels of salinity. So let's say this is uh, right out here by Mare State Park. And I'm coming right in. I just went underneath I-10. And down here on the bottom, i got plenty of salt water. So in the bottom of my water column, I've got a very salty area. I get to the top, i got fresh water. So a cool thing about the Delta is people always go, oh, man, this is wonderful. I can catch redfish, speckled trout, largemouth bass on the same area. Yes, you can. And a lot of times it's just based on what part of the water column you're in. So that's how we take a look at the salt wedge in our estuary. And we look at um, other ways that fresh water and salt water mix. We get a better understanding of how to fish more effectively in our delta. Okay, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope that kind of helped clear up how salinities will vary throughout a water column and in different river systems and throughout our bay. So thank you all again. Hope you all had a wonderful Thanksgiving. And uh, we'll see you next time.